Veteran suicide, it's a battle we're losing on American soil. The Department of Veterans Affairs figures 22 veterans kill themselves each day, nearly one every hour. As ABC 15 investigator Lori Jangley had discovered, our own Arizona National Guard is unable to take care of every soldier affected by the aftermath of war. And members of the National Guard are inevitably falling through the cracks before they can get help. These are the faces of warriors. I put the patches on Scott's uniform because I was so proud of him. Heroes whose lives in the combat zone constantly collided with death. I just felt like we had been to hell and back. They were Arizona National Guard soldiers used to reporting for monthly weekend drill duties in the Arizona desert. But in 2004, the turf changed. More than 180 members of the 860th Military Police went to war in the Iraq desert. Explosions bombarded their units so often, 36 received Purple Hearts. Two never made it home. For the members who did make it back to American soil, the battle was far from over. The 860th lost twice as many soldiers to suicide. Christopher Palmer, Rick Kellogg, Ted Duhame, and Scott Belcher. And even after he fell asleep, he just sobbed and sobbed. He would wake up a little bit and he'd say, please always love me and never leave me. <laughs> The ringing in Scott Belcher's ears after an IED blast was so loud he thought his aunt could hear it. He had only been home from deployment a few days when he took his own life. He says, I'll wake you up when I come home. And Scott never came home. Scott Belcher's family thinks that he, like many soldiers, suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder when he returned from war. PTSD is a factor that can lead to suicide. The ABC 15 investigators learned it's also a factor the National Guard overlooked when deploying Christopher Palmer to Iraq. This is 2011 video of Christopher Palmer in a standoff with police. His ex-wife says it's important to see. He tosses his military tags to police. You can hear his frustration. Moments later, he took his own life. I relive it every single day. It's almost like a nightmare. It's, um, realizing that this really did happen, that he's not here. And that's probably the worst part. Gina Manson was Palmer's ex-wife. Did he love, love, love the military? <laughs> She says Palmer went to Iraq twice, first with the Marine Reserves, then the National Guard. Post-traumatic stress disorder, she says, had been a struggle since his first deployment. It's almost like he would black out and just start screaming at people for no reason. The ABC 15 investigators found records that show a military psychologist treated him for depression, panic attacks, and suicidal thoughts after his first tour with the Marine Reserves in Iraq. No soldier should have to come home and feel like they don't want to live anymore after just fighting for their country. Despite his ongoing treatment, records show the Arizona National Guard enlisted him and deployed him back to the war zone. We asked National Guard Lieutenant Colonel Cosme Lopez about the decision. Did he raise his hand and say, I've got PTSD, I'm under all these medications, uh, when he signed on the dotted line and raised his hand? I don't know. Whether he raised his hand or not, Manson points out his condition was documented in black and white. They're just a number, like robots. They just send out and they keep sending them and sending them till they can't send them anymore. The Arizona National Guard claims they rarely deploy soldiers like Palmer with known PTSD struggles unless their conditions are stable. But the Guard admits it doesn't have a foolproof way to detect a soldier's mental health status and cannot require a soldier to get the help they need. Has the National Guard been left behind on, on many things uh, from equipment to uh, pay issues to now suicide awareness and training. The, uh, it happens to the Guard. So what's being done to address the problems affecting the Arizona National Guard? We took our questions straight to the state legislature. Tomorrow night at 10, an exclusive look at plans for a new state law aimed at helping soldiers readjust to civilian life, plus what the Guard is doing to combat the situation. I'm investigator Lori Jangliha, ABC 15 News.
you think about PTSD and you think about the soldiers and now you can see just how much it affects the families as well. Oh yeah, and the community. Yeah. It doesn't just end there. The circles are far and wide yeah. and it's something that's not discussed enough. So mm -hmm. we thank Lori Jane for that story on our website as well. We have in-depth stories of other soldiers going through the same thing who have struggled with PTSD, struggled with suicide, and then of course some resources available to help all of you, every family going through this. Yeah, and again, part two of our story airs tomorrow night at 10. Well, first, our ABC 15 investigators brought you the story of four Arizona National Guard veterans who lost their lives to suicide. Tonight, there are plans for action. A new state law to combat the problem and save lives. ABC 15 investigator Lori Jane Gleha has an exclusive look at the ideas and one Arizona lawmaker's journey from Iraq to our state capital. These are a pair of my old nasty boots. Dusty memories. This is my rucksack. Fill this Phoenix garage. It smells like dirt. It's where freshman Arizona state badge. legislator. So these are my weapons qualification badges. Mark Cardenas keeps his military gear. A pair of knee pads. He left the Arizona National Guard in November after eight years and for the first time. Let's see what else is here. He's unpacking vivid reminders of his experience in the sun-drenched Iraq desert. This is all sweat. It's pretty nasty. The 26 year old joined the military right out of high school. He was a 50 caliber gunner and a truck commander. He remembers every close call. This vehicle was hit three different times. I also had to uh, pop the hatches and pull out some of the guys. Cardenas made it home alive, but he didn't escape one of the deadliest wounds of war, post-traumatic stress disorder, which can lead to suicide. It's hard to describe. Um, the only thing that I could tell you for certain is that you, you can't function. The Army reported more than 12,000 new PTSD cases last year. Compared to a decade ago, more than 400 times the number of National Guard soldiers sought help from military treatment facilities. But for Guard members who report only monthly for weekend duties, getting help is a challenge. The advocacy group Veterans for Common Sense found they're also four times more likely to be denied their medical claims by the Veterans Administration for things like PTSD. In his darkest First moments, they did, they did, Cardenas contemplated a, a suicide. Throat. What's to stop me from just turning left and driving off the cliff? You know, that would probably be the easiest way. Um, because it was, it was hard to deal with it. Cardenas was able to find help coping with PTSD, but he knows many National Guard soldiers do not. Now, as the co-chair of our state legislature's bipartisan veterans caucus, Cardenas is trying to help veterans make an easier transition to civilian life. We could be the state that shows the rest of the union what a veteran-friendly state, the most veteran-friendly state in the entire country could be. He recommends that House Bill 2484 do pass. Cardenas's bill already passed the House and every Senate committee. It works to prevent joblessness among veterans. The bill would offer tax credits to private businesses who hire veterans. Vets would also get advance notice when new state government jobs become available. It makes sure that Arizona values people's service, values our veteran service. Cardenas' bill is stalled right now while we wait for a state budget to be released. This was the first session that this bipartisan Veterans Caucus was able to meet, but legislators say they have lots of ideas for the future. We put resources on our website for veterans and their families at abc15.com slash investigators. I'm investigator Lori Jane Gleha, ABC 15 News. The National Guard has worked to develop new resiliency programs to fight veteran suicide. Soldiers are now required to take suicide awareness and PTSD training before and after they deploy. Yeah, they also participate in a reintegration program when they come home, but with only five counselors for 9,000 soldiers, not everyone gets access to the treatment that they may need. And the Guard admits many soldiers simply slip through the cracks. If you missed last night's story or if you want to check out the resources available to soldiers and their families, go to abc15.com and click on Investigators right there under the News tab.